Our podcast is supported by Adobe in the Adobe Creative Cloud, the world's best creative app and services, so you can make almost anything you can imagine wherever you're inspired. We use Adobe to help make this podcast using Audition, InDesign, and more. So join the creative community with the Adobe Creative Cloud, and let's make something better unlocking your world of creativity. Tap into your most original thinking, organize your ideas, and create the opportunities to launch your creative work. Unlocking your world of creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. Welcome back, friends, to our podcast, Unlocking Your World of Creativity. And the unlocking is the emphasis of our program today. You've got ideas, you've got inspiration, you probably have note cards or clippings all in a file. You've got your idea, you're ready to write, you're ready to write a novel, write a song, write an article, write all the things that you want to write, even proposals for that matter. But you're saying, I'm a bit stuck and I need to get this process underway. So we're going to talk about where inspiration and organization overlap to really unlock our creativity. And my guest today to talk about that is Christine Karen. Christine, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Mark. And we were laughing just before we hit the record button that <laughs> to a creative person, there's nothing more fun than to think about process. <laughs> <laughs> but if we overthink it, then we're still stuck again. But even your company name is Good Jelly. Yeah. And I love the idea of gelling these ideas and bringing mm. them together and get them on paper, get it on the screen, and finally hit the send button of our work. But let's go back to the beginning and just think about that. Why a creative person who might be struggling needs process to help unlock that? First of all, it's called the creative process. So oh, very good. we want to make that process work more effectively. And what I found and where the spark for Good Jelly was, I was sitting in a writing conference and it was a break and I was eavesdropping and <laughs> I overheard some writers really struggling. And what struck me was it had nothing to do with their talent or their craft. It was just organizational things and process things that were really easy to resolve. And the because I have a project management and process improvement background, the thought that came into my head was the writing adventure doesn't have to be so hard. And that was the spark that I was like, if writers or any artist or creative could really look at their process as a separate thing from their craft, from their art, and understand how to manage that and work through it, it just, it clears the path and makes everything easier. Very good. And let's say that we're talking with somebody who's got that idea, even a manuscript or an outline in front of them, but just can't seem to say what's next. How do you address that? So one thing that we, it gets into planning your work and you're even if you could imagine that everything before you started recording, we talked, oh, that little thing called the pandemic, that threw out everybody's plans. And people often mistake that a plan is a prediction of the future. It's just a direction in this moment with the knowledge you have at this time. And then you're going to move forward and you're going to get more knowledge. So if someone is really feeling like, I don't know where to go, then you decide the next small step and you make it really small. Do you take a class? Do you, and even the smaller step before that is, do you look for classes and see what sparks your interest? And then do you take the class or do you say, I need to do some brainstorming and you pick one action. And then when you take that action, and you finish it, you get a little boost of confidence. I call that a done boost. You get this little boost of motivation. You're like, hey, I got that. I can figure out the next step. And then over time, the process unrolls and the path unrolls before you. I love the little micro boost that you get. From, <laughs> at least I moved something forward today. Yes. 
Yeah. And I think a lot of creatives projects or writer projects, especially like writing a novel is so long. And if you're a little withholding and you don't give yourself credit for the small steps in between, then that just, just flattens your motivation and your confidence. So a mindset trick is we're all, I'm like, get as many done boosts in a day as you can. So how are you breaking down your work? So you're saying, did it. And I can take on tomorrow and yes. do a bunch of things tomorrow. Because that's right. how you get creative projects done. Sure. Rather than looking back at the end of the day and saying, I didn't get anything accomplished yes. today. And there's well, so many, and so many, I guess, processes. Wake up first thing, write a thousand words. Just there, there's a lot of these little tricks and things. But I wanted to underscore a word you used right at the outset, and that is our writing adventure. Yeah. But to think of it as an adventure and kind of a journey or a, something more than a task when it's not just yes. a process or a formula. Yes. My vision of the world, I finally worked on my business plan earlier, like at the end of last year. And I was like, really, what am I doing? And I'm like, my vision of a world is where all writers delight in their creative process. And that word delight is, yes, it includes joy and happiness, but it's really that you have extreme satisfaction in your journey. And so this sense of not feeling like you're in a slog, I mean, you're what a gift you're bringing your art to the world. Like revel in that. We Love use that. we have a process called revel in, <laughs> in yes. good jelly speak because it's that your spark, your... I just keep coming back to the word, what a gift you're bringing to the world and being in alignment with that. And so from a productivity perspective, there are a lot of process tips and hacks and productivity. What I focus on is a writer really connecting to their own creative code and their context. So if you like to write every day and that serves you, great. If you're, you are more of a surger, then set your weekly word count goals for a week. So you may get the same amount of word counts. It's what I call a steady, someone who is served by that steady focus on daily accomplishment. But some writers like me, I set weekly word count goals and I can hit the same numbers as someone who does it every day. Mine just looks much more variable. Yes, yes. And I guess the different writing projects, a blog versus a book or a, yes. you know, a story. What am I trying to say? Story. Yeah. A novel. A, a, yes. a, or a film. Or yes. a, yeah. Very good. Yeah. And you have also drawn the analogy that computer programmers and other techies have agile mm. to keep their projects moving and to yeah. get these surges. But I, I think good jelly for artists is the analogy of agile perhaps. And it, isn't it more fun and a little more yeah. palatable. <laughs> and in the program that I have for writers, which is a small group coaching program, I teach agile for artists. So I created a new kind of agile. I took all my project management experience and agile experience and agile is there's productivity aspects of it, but it's also a lot of team-based communication and keeping folks in sync. While when you're on an artistic journey, unless it's collaborative writing or you're working in a team, then you're what you have to manage more than communication outward is communication with yourself. So managing your mindset. So I created, we do the same you know, it, it's similar to Scrum where you're working in bursts of time and you're creating rhythm and focus in your work to, again, it's always looking for motivation and confidence and the sense of, I can do this. And so, yes, Agile for Artists, totally down with that. I love that. Maybe you can share a case, confidentially, of course, if you don't want to use names, but give us an example of someone who was moving along, maybe slower than they wanted to in their writing journey and began to embrace your process. And how did that turn out? Well, that sounds there, like an interview question. Yeah. Tell me about a time. <laughs> that's, that's, no, it's a great question because it's sometimes I step back and say, I have a moment of, oh my gosh, this is like seriously working. Yes. <laughs> I get excited on behalf of the writer. And so 
I had a writer who went through the very talented, very committed and a go getter and was completely blocked with spinning, could not move their writing project forward for years. And then we she came into the program and there's there are times that some writers are a little over processed. They're a little process lockdown. They're being so rigid in their time or applying these traditional expectations of writers write every day. And then when you fail to meet that, you're not aligned with your own creative code, then it starts, you have start to have a drag. And so this writer just embrace this process. And the three pillars of sustainable creative productivity is smart process, grounded power, and inner kindness from a good jelly perspective. And just using smart process, staying connected with yourself, and being a little more kind to yourself, slowly you get this progress. And then suddenly something that wasn't moving for years is moving forward and she's going to finish the first draft of that novel in a few months. It's exciting. It's, it's terrific. Let's pause a moment on that inner kindness because yes. we can be pretty rough on ourselves, can't we? Yes. It's It was interesting when the feedback first came, the testimonials on the first jam experience, I there was so many comments from the participants about inner kindness. I'm like, oh my gosh, people are going to think that I'm like some big, it's just <laughs> kumbaya or something. Yes. And I'm like, and I really had to say inner kindness works when you have smart process and grounded power, because then you can step out of this conversation with your inner critic and you can say to your inner critic, Hey, I've got this. I got, I get that you're concerned, but I now have a way to work. I'm staying connected to myself. And then kindness just becomes so much easier as well. When you try to be kind to yourself, when you don't have other things in order, that's when it get, can get a little dicey mm. and actually feel even more unsafe than just like inner critic attacks. You get into the should, I shouldn't be doing this. A real writer wouldn't be having these thoughts. So true. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned your jam experience. Now, what I read so far on your website was a, a real kind of group experience, yes. a small group training. How does that work? My aha, I kept thinking, how am I going? Because I didn't want to just do a class where you watched videos because I knew the, I want the writers to experience progress. I want the writers to experience flow and understand how to create flow. And I had an aha one day, I was like, I do the same thing for corporate teams all the time designers, developers, QA people, they get the benefit of, in agile terms, a scrum master or a project manager, just keeping things out of their path, helping them work through blocks. And I thought, why don't I just create the jam experience like a project team of writers? And so it's fabulous. We, in essence, sprint. The good jelly language is a little different, but we sprint together. There's conversations, there's daily updates. And so they learn from each other, but just like, it, do not ask me to code anything, <laughs> <laughs> but I facilitate developers making progress all the time. I don't have to, I don't read their work. I don't comment and make judgments on, is it good or bad? We're just focused on process all the time and them taking charge of their writing adventure. So it was, it's magical. Love that. Let's pause here to find out how we can learn more about that program. Just check out goodjelly.com and right at the top on the right, there's a button that says, learn how to jam. Love that. And the jam experience couldn't fit better with the brand yes. Good Jelly. So <laughs> nice job. As a brander, I really am embracing this whole <laughs> brand experience. I'm really loving it. Thinking about your own creativity. Where do you draw some of your inspiration and translate all of this process improvement to the creative side? I think the way my brain has always worked is I see patterns and connections. For me, anything is inspiration. 
And even on the, I do series of posts on the blog and the, and I, if you're on my newsletter, you get the, what is the connection between this set of posts? And I just started a little series called Mixed Metiers. So I'm taking like Monday's blog post was, I took a class with the high wire walk, high wire artist, Philippe Petit many years ago. And so it's wisdom from a high wire artist applied to the writing adventure. I talked to a friend of mine who does curling. I don't know if you say you do curling, but right. <laughs> or are you a curler? Well, what, I'm not what sure. What term of verb is curl? To curl. Okay. I've curled. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, she <I> curls. <laughs> <laughs> and it was such a lovely analogy, similar to actually with jellyfish. When I don't know if we were being recorded or not, but we talked about momentum and the name good jelly. But the way jellyfish move is they clear the water out in front of them and then they just move into that space so it's not from the they're not pushing they're making space and moving forward making space and moving forward and there's a and carol's going to be upset for me because i can't remember the <laughs> official the sweeper it's i believe it's the sweeper that goes out in front and is making it like to speed the stone up or slow it down and that's how you become your own project manager for yourself. You become your own sweeper where you make it easier to make forward momentum. And so for me, I mean, I could sit in the park and something could spark my, all that, that would just be, or my writing, what in my own personal writing, I write young adult fiction. I keep coming back to this idea of clouds and all the different types of cloud types. So just, I love that part of, of writing and connections and seeing new patterns or seeing things in different ways. Yes. I'm glad you brought up Philip, Philippe Petit. I do remember reading his book and it was terrific about, yes. again, that creativity. You think you're just walking a high wire, except yes. it's between two skyscrapers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So. One of the, I was looking at my notes from that class and one of the things that I really appreciated from a lot of times writers are worried if they think, oh, it's She's a process improvement consultant or a project manager. Like she's going to just suck all the joy out of my process and mm -hmm. lock me down. And I was in prepping for that and reminding myself of those notes from that class with him. He has a phrase he uses, and I'll try to say the French correctly, le pied équilibre. That's a little, for all time I lived in France, that was... <laughs> poor, but the equilibrium foot, basically. And he said, whatever foot you step on first onto the wire, that becomes your step of equilibrium. Like it grounds you on the wire. But then he said right after that, unless the other one feels better. <laughs> <laughs> then just change. Yeah. And yes. that to me, yeah, that to me gets into what, you know, what there is a sense of what feels right to you on the creative adventure and to ensure, yes, you can learn from other people and get ideas. And I'm always fascinated by hearing other writers talk, but then you have to say, and does that work for me? And does it work for me right now? Sometimes you have a sense of not quite yet. I'll file it away but there's something there. And other times you just flat out, no, that's not going to work for me. And being attuned to that and honoring that. Yes. Let's find that writer who's sitting right now in front of their computer, staring at a blank screen. They got to write a blog. They got to write a proposal. They've got to write the next page or next chapter of their novel, but they just literally I'm staring at the blank screen. In the old days, the typewriter was the scariest yeah. thing you could ever look at. What are a couple of suggestions that you could give this writer right here, right now that says, if you're listening to this program, here's a key to unlock something. The main tip I would be saying, do not approach writer's block like a writer. <laughs> writers mm -hmm. are told really weird things like writer's block doesn't exist. If you're blocked, you don't want it enough. All this will approach blocks like a project manager does. They're just part of the process. You think through what 
think through all the tools you have. Would taking a walk help you? Would taking a shower help you? Would standing up and turning around in a circle help you just to change the energy? But don't make the block bigger than it is. The developers are blocked. QA people are blocked. Everybody gets blocked. And when you stop acting as it's like some statement about you as a writer, then you can just get practical and just take an action. And sometimes stepping away, like you did put the parameters on that example, like you had to get it done. But to just to take a breather and say, for this next second, I actually don't have to and see what space that opens up. And it's just this adding a sense of playfulness to this feeling of you can't move forward. And the other thing that I would say, connect into the part of you that absolutely knows you can move forward. Think of something where you were stuck before and you moved forward. So is it a mindset thing? Is it a process thing? And then just, you know, it, go get some good jelly because I'm always like, you've got this. I like this. And just as you said, it's like just for the moment. Yeah. Uh, just embrace yeah. this moment. Maybe you don't, but in the moment. Yeah. 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 And I think that gets into what I was saying earlier about the done boost and the power of claiming small wins. If you're in front of the page and you're locked into this kind of dynamic with the page that you can't move forward, whatever or whatever artist your artistry mm -hmm. is, in that moment, if you can say, hey, I'm just blocked. That is a win in and of itself because you've pulled yourself out of that kind of tension with your art and you're creating space and in space is flow and is movement and is possibility. This, you just, I sometimes, I don't, you are more of a scientist than I am, but <laughs> how, like when you have magnets and somehow they're demagnetized and they just drop that you want to drop the with your art and that when we get blocked we get tight mm -hmm. and tightness is not flow so just that moment of having the ding let the magnet let that polarization drop and then you've got it yeah, it's a good visual Thanks for sharing that. Listeners, we've also been consistently now using this writing and writer, but yes. you're right, Christine. It's like creators of all kinds. Yes. We might be talking to a songwriter, a restaurateur, yes. an animator, a creative of many different kinds, and yes. the principles really do apply. Yes, I think. And that's what was interesting for me as well, because I have worked with academics. I've worked with dog trainers. I've worked with artists and all different corporate types, but, and that's why to me, it's a separate, it's a separate thing than craft that you have to understand your work, your process, your mindset, but that process is a separate thing. And just as you want to ace your craft, you want to ace how you get your art done. And that's a different set of skills that I don't think is often talked about, that are talked about the periphery. You learn certain tools like the Pomodoro technique or certain very specific things just to churn out productivity. But yeah, that's whatever your metier is. There's the way you do it, your relationship with it, how you move yourself forward into the vision you have of your creativity. Oh my gosh, Mark, I just, can I just tell you, I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. I wish you were more enthusiastic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. And it's very encouraging and inspiring. And listeners, go to Christine's blog, but the website is Good Jelly dot com. But a number of blogs, every one of them has a tip, a trick, an inspiration, just something to help say in the moment, what could what ideas could you gather? What techniques could you try to get out of that? And then I think to put a final punctuation on this with the ultimate goal of getting the work out into the world. Yes. So this is not just, can we finish the draft perhaps and get it to the yes. proofreader? That's one thing, but if we've got something to say, we've got to get that voice heard. Yes. And that's, that's 
the creative process and your, I talk about writerly work, but your creative work is much more than just the creative part. It's the getting it out into the world, being in partnerships with other artists, making connections and all that you manage. And if you get so hyper-focused on just words on a page, sure, you'll make progress, but then you still have all those other parts like writing a query letter, being part of a critique group, maybe volunteering at an artist conference and all those things help to your point to get your work out into the world. Yes. And I love that you've underscored this teamwork and collaboration. And I can imagine in your small group program that you see this exchange of ideas and experiences and tips and tricks yes. and all sorts of things. And also affirmation, like as there's all different kinds of artistry and creativity. Like to me, when I go in and work with the development team, I feel like I'm in the presence of creative genius or with a QA person or with a designer, all whatever someone's area of excellence is to me, it's just rampant with creativity. They can do that. I can't. Something's happening there. Just the power of that. And what artists or writers or who are on a more solo journey in the creative act, like you, as you said, that getting it out into the world is obviously collaborative, but in that moment of creation of working alone, you can feel alone. You can feel like, am I the only one like experiencing this? And so to hear other writers process struggles, it's very affirming for folks. And sometimes we discover that there's different flavors of the same process challenge. And that's always fascinating too, when that comes up. Absolutely. Christine, what a terrific conversation and love your energy. And I love <laughs> your, yeah, what's great is just like good writing, you have the content, but you also have the personality behind it. And thank I really you. enjoyed our chat. Thank you. And thank you to the listeners. Thank you to you for having me and let's go. Let's good jelly. <laughs> let's go. That's right. Let's jam. <laughs> let's jam. Yes. My guest has been Christine Karen. Her website and business is goodjelly.com. And we're going to put the process and the writing and get our work out into the world. And that's what it, really what it's all about. And as I mentioned, we get a chance on this podcast to talk to creative practitioners everywhere. In recent episodes, we've been to Estonia and Norway, Cape Town, South Africa, Bali, uh, and today we've landed and stamped our creative passport in Boston. But we're going to continue these journeys to bring ideas and inspiration, also tips to organize your ideas better, and ultimately get our work out into the world. So until then, I'm Mark Stenson, and we're unlocking your world of creativity. We'll see you next time. Unlocking Your World of Creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. This program was produced by BSB Media, creators of IntelliQ Leadership Stories, Unlocking Your World of Creativity, and thepeaceroom.love. If you like this podcast, here's another show that you'll like from BSB Media. The Patients Speak, Healthcare Innovations Accelerating the Patient Journey. It features interviews with healthcare leaders, patient advocates, medical providers, and researchers. Presented by 83 Bar. Look for The Patients Speak on your favorite podcast app.